A B I S A I say flies to the sky upside, aka Jordan Gems, aka Slim Dick Batty, aka I'ma still keep on doing what I'm doing. And we are back with another gameplay from Choices. Dirty little secrets. <laughs> Book one, chapter three, potluck of secrets at Vermilion Lanes. Annual 4th of July potluck. The weather is not the only thing heating up. I know it's been a good minute since I played Choices on Dirty Little Seek. <laughs> because I do all this. I do all this on my own. In a, in, in a sense, we're guarding to just like video editing. The um, Me having to e edit the videos. Me having to... to to edit my own songs. Only thing I do is get the producer do 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 their thing, and I do and I and I come through. I come through when I need to come through. Majority of the time, so it's like clockwork at this point. So without further ado, if you're new, welcome to the channel. Subscribe to Vigilante Squad. If you're vigilant about your life and you know what you're doing in your heart and you know your attentions. It's all that matters about your attentions because people really out here trying to do some, some crazy, I, it's weird. I just think it's weird. Like people are really out here doing like, it's like, it's like, I feel like everything that I thought wouldn't happen to me is like happened to me, it happened to me. And it's like, oh, I get it now. Like me like sitting here, that's why I feel, feel so, uh, feel much different when I hear certain songs that I used to play back back when I was uh, younger and I and I like I like I love the song but to really like listen to the lyrics and to how other artists is really like being vulnerable about these stuff it's like I get what you're coming from mm. so that's what I, how it feels so thumbs up button share the video thank you for tuning in let's get this thing started <laughs> It's the morning of Vermilion Lane's 4th of July potluck. And you're in your underwear sifting through boxes of clothes. Hmm. What does one wear to a neighborhood black party? What would Tyler like? Not what, what, not what would Tyler like? You flash back to your first meeting with Tyler. A warm smile will come into your face. I couldn't let a new neighbor struggle and not offer a hand. He was so sweet and friendly. But like lightning, Sadie's accusation of murder flashes through your head and your smile fades. Everyone knows he murdered his wife. But how could that be possible? I saw how much family means to Tyler. Could he have killed his wife? There's no way. He does have his secrets. I hate to admit it, but I barely know Tyler. And he seemed cagey when he talked. Could his whole gorgeous family man routine just be an act? Suddenly, the doorbell rings, saving you from dwelling on the issue. Coming! You rush downstairs, swinging the, the door open to find Tyler standing on your porch. His eyes light up when he sees you. Tyler! I wasn't expecting you! That explains the outfit. Or lack thereof. You look down, realizing you're still in your underwear and in full view of everyone on Vermilion Lane. Oh my God. You quickly pull Tyler inside and shut the door, face flaming. Good thinking. You definitely don't want anyone to see you right now. You groan in embarrassment, trying to cover yourself and notice Tyler kindly averting his eyes. 
though a smirk remains on his face. I thought I'd escort you to the potluck, but if you want to go back up and finish getting ready, But if you want to go back up. And, oh, okay. See, this is what happens when I read too fast. <laughs> oh, over here thinking, like, what you trying to back up, Tyler? What you want me to back up on? Like, <laughs> I can wait here. <laughs> he sneaks a rapid peek your way before once more politely averting his eyes. Seeing the humor in the situation, you straighten up. Okay. Don't act all proper now. You enjoying this too much. You certainly wasn't shy about enjoying the view when you were standing out on my porch. You place your hands on your hips and puff out your chest. Emboldened, Tyler's his gaze. Tyler's his gaze takes a sensual tour of your body. I should have guessed you liked the attention. Stay where you are. I'll be back in two minutes. I'll be a fool to go anywhere. Your thoughts races as you head back upstairs, unable to forget the lustful glint in Tyler's gay eyes. A flurry summer shirt and shorts lie on the center of your bed. You slip them on and break it to a smile as you check yourself out in the mirror. If Tyler's reaction to seeing me in my underwear is any indication, he's going to love this. That's my outfit right there. That's what I'm talking about. I'm already loving it. Your fashion sense is impeccable. Ugh. <laughs> you feel a thrill. The garments fit perfectly, and you love that the sheer shirt shows off your toned chest and abs. But when you're buttoning it up, you realize you've done them crooked. You hear Tyler call out to you. Everything up, okay up there? You undo the buttons and let out a frustrated sigh. <sighs> Tyler, I need you. You hear Tyler's footsteps coming up the stairs, but they stop when he reaches the landing. Are you decent? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Come in and find out. <laughs> I wouldn't be not saying all that. I'm like, yeah, I'm decent. I'm good. <laughs> he peeks inside to see you undo the last button. You look at him through the mirror in front of you. I could use a little help. Your fingers are more nimble than mine. Tyler smiles and comes up behind you. I'm more of an expert at working with wood and power drills, but I suppose I can give this a try. You feel a whoosh of excitement as he takes hold of your shirt. His warm hands brushing the bare of skin of your stomach. Since you're not all that experienced in this, I'm looking for you to button me up, not take it the rest of the way off. Tyler chuckles deep in his throat as he does up in the first, does up the first button, then the next slowly working his way upward. His fingers brush against your pecs and linger for an extra beat as his eyes catch your yours in the mirror. Summer flirt, Tyler's a fan of your outfit. If I haven't said it already, you look stunning. Caught up in admiring your reflections in the mirror, the way you fit perfectly in his strong arms, you answer belatedly. Yeah, we sure do. <laughs> we sure do. <laughs> Tyler laughs sweetly as you realize what you just said. His breath ghost, ghosting against your ear. Go 
Ghosting. Ghosting. We. Oui? Sorry, I meant, um, that's very nice of you to say. But the moment is broken as Sadie's warning plays through your head once again. He killed his wife. Hit with a pang of unease, you tear your gaze from his reflection and head toward the door. We should get going. You hurry out ahead of him, but can feel his gaze burning on your back as you retreat. As you walk up the top of the street where the potluck is being held, Tyler points out the mayor's house. Mr. Wright has been Oak Valley's mayor for as long as I've lived here. He's usually too busy to come to Vermilion Lane events though. Right? As in... His first lady is... Or was... Valerie. Does literally everything tie back to her? Your stomach drops as you again consumed by memories of Valerie dropping dead in your house of Sadie's ominous warning about Tyler. I'm sorry. I never should have brought up Valerie or her husband. You must still be shaken up by what happened. Honestly... I can't stop thinking about Valerie. It's Sadie I'm worried about. I'm worrying about. It's only half the truth, but it's all you willing to divulge to Tyler right now. He puts a comforting hand on your shoulder. You have a good heart, caring for someone you barely even knew, but don't let it eat at you. And remember, if you ever need a pick-me-up, you're always welcome to come over for some strawberry lemonade. Strawberry lemonade. Strawberry lemonade. Yeah, he know, he know, he know, he know how to make the, the, the he know. He know how, he, he made. I said, wait. Wait. <laughs> you can't help but feel soothed by his sweet words and charming smile, suppressing any bubbling doubts about him. That's quite a proposal. I may start showing up at all hours of the day and night. For you, my door is always open. At the top of the street, food sits buffet style on rows of tables and wives gossip with one another while their husbands sit and drink beer. <laughs> Vermilion Lane sure knows how to throw an event. Where should we start? Before Tyler can answer, Sadie swoops in and flirtatiously wraps her hands around Tyler's bicep, batting her eyelashes at him. <laughs> I'm always gonna make this entertaining. I'm always gonna make this entertaining. <laughs> There's my hero. Tyler, come. We need your magic hands on some broken tables. Oh, Sadie, do you think it could? Sadie turns to you as though just noticing your presence, her fake grin growing. So glad you made it, sweetie. I hope you don't mind sharing Tyler here. Duty calls, you know. Do I mind? Probably do, but you know, I gotta keep... Sometimes I just feel like I just gotta keep it classy sometimes. Cause I know if you wanna be petty, I don't I shouldn't I shouldn't have to be petty like you, but we can go low. But we have to see him rise above the rise above the pettiness. Okay. Tyler and I had the best morning together. A few measly meanings apart won't work hurt. Sadie's smile turned a touch lethal, her voice absolutely bursting with false cheer. <laughs> By the way, dear, it's customary to bring a homemade dish to the event. It is a potluck after all. Without another word, Sadie swifts a bemused Tyler away. 
I'm really starting to despise that woman. Feeling like a fish out of water, you approach a group of downstreeters you recognize, catching their painfully suburban conversation. Mari, this green bean casserole is five star. I look forward to it every year. She will be making the casserole. She would be making the casserole. Please tell us you're finally going to share the recipe. You two ask me that every potluck. And every year, what do I say? Your recipes are being buried with you. Six feet under. Look. What a aptly timed joke. For sure. Like, no. -uh. I feel like I could understand you. Something like that, but it's on. Look, the way. Okay. The way. The way. How. I think about my grandma. And how they. Look, my grandma. They used to talk about how my grandma would be throwing down in the kitchen. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I just can't believe how they never sit here and get a recipe. Especially for 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 the banana pudding. Okay, okay. So yes. But if I, I when I make banana pudding, I always I, I think I, I I I think that's grandma giving me the recipe. <laughs> oh, Alex, I didn't see you. Mary blushes, hastily tucking hair behind her ear, and what looks like a nervous tick. She forces a smile. I'm so glad you came. I was just on my way to the ladies' room. But please do try the casserole. As soon as Mary makes her suspicious exit, the other two women converge on you like vultures with an appetite for gossip. Don't you clean up nice? That's a lovely outfit. You're making me feel underdressed. Oh, thank you. Now, honey, I couldn't help but notice you arrived at Tyler. The two of you have been spending quite some time together. Whoa, he offered to help move me in and show me around. Is that notable? You have heard, haven't you, that his wife died a sudden heart attack, just like Valerie. She stays, she stays, whispers the last words, and you realize it isn't just Sadie. These women consider Tyler a suspect in his wife's death as well. And maybe Valerie's is too. Tyler a killer? Why would you believe such ridiculous gossip? What exactly makes you say that? I know what you're insinuating, but no one can make someone have a heart attack. Can they? Your neighbors exchange a shared look and then give a very deliberate shrug. None of this seems fair. Everyone's just pegged Tyler as some sort of spouse killer without any real proof. Before you can excuse yourself, the downstreeters move on to gossiping about yet another neighbor. Can you believe Christine has the gal to show her face? The news about her bribe in college is except her daughter just broke. What? Of course I believe it. She thinks being on the HOA makes her invisible. She wouldn't have broken your daughter's leg to keep her off the lacrosse team otherwise. I'm sorry, did you just say that one of our neighbors broke your daughter's leg on purpose? I give you one piece of, of advice, downstreeter to downstreeter. Stay away from those upstreeters. They're all opportunistic shrews who lack a conscience. The 
way the upstreeters and downstreeters talk about each other is like Hatfields and McCoys. As if on cue. <laughs> a woman you can't only assume is Christine Santos with a confrontational smile. Kelsey, how presumptuous of you to keep spreading lies about me. You must have more meaningful, meaningful things to do, no? Christine, so you finally managed to pull yourself away from the wine cooler. Her lawsuits can be so stressful, you poor thing. Unfazed, Christine tickles the newborn baby strapped to Kelsey's chest. Have you figured out who the father is? I heard you've been doing extra credit with your kids as principal while Barry's is at work. Christine, what? <laughs> You fig have you figured out who the father is? <laughs> I heard you've been doing extra credit with your kids' principal while Barry's is at work. Christine. 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 Uh, <laughs> she probably have a heart attack right there in there. Oh God. I need to get away before I'm a cash lead in the first suburban house life throwdown. For sure. Damn, this is crazy. I stay out of drama. <laughs> you always try to give me drama. Like, mm mm. Mm mm. Peace and love out here. <laughs> Just throw that shit over here. We're we gonna have a problem. No, no, no. <laughs> you quietly sneak away, intent on finding Tyler, only to catch sight of Downstreeter Mary slipping out of an upstreet house. I thought she went to find the bathroom, but she's acting like she's hiding something. That's how she was look. <laughs> she quickly makes her way back to the sidewalk where she stops to admire a shiny pearl bracelet on her wrist. Is she stealing? Aren't you a beauty? She did not have that bracelet on five minutes ago. What is she doing leaving the house of an enemy upstreeter? What dirty secrets is she hiding? Let's find out. You follow after Mary as she sticks to the less traveled side of the street, still pretending you're scouring the pout luck with Tyler. Whatever Mary is up to, she clearly doesn't want anyone finding out about it. But as Mary stops to step out of the sidewalk, a man suddenly grabs her wrist. What in the hell do you think you're doing? Come with me right now. Wait. Holy crap, what's going on? You double your pace and follow them back to the heart of the potluck, straining to hear their whispered conversation. Didn't think I'd find out. Ugh, I can barely make out what he's saying. I need to find a way to get closer. Maybe I can saddle up to the hors d'oeuvres, pretend to be looking for someone. Wow, these mini queen. Quiches look so delicious. Mm, Spanish quiche? You pretend to expect the mini quiche platter, but you focus your hearing on Mary and the man. Are you really gonna try to lie to me again? I'm your husband. It's not what you think. He's Mary's his husband? 
Did he just catch Mary cheating? Mary's husband grabs her by the wrist, bringing the bracelet into full view. Then how do you explain this? It was a gift! Someone just decided to give you a pearl bracelet that reads, To Karen, with all my love, Bob. You're stealing again, aren't you? Stealing? Do you really want to be known as the Vermilion Lane Klepto? Because that's what's going to happen. I've heard enough. Mary escapes her husband's grip and angrily whirls around, bumping right into you. Oh, Alex! You freeze for a second, then think fast to ward off any suspicion. Hey! Oh no, the quiche! As convincingly as you can possibly manage, you drop your quiche onto the ground. I'm such a klutz. As you bend down to pick it up, Mary's husband grabs her wrist again. We need to talk about this, Mary. Seriously, for once. Fine. Let's talk. The two of them storm off, clearly not suspicious of you. And you're having too much fun with your detective act to stop now. I'm really onto something. I can't let them out of my sight now. You stay on their heels as Mary's husband catches up to her, pulling her under the shade of a palm tree on a nearby lawn. What is it going to take to get you to stop? Valerie caught you red-handed when you tried sneaking that stupid cake mixer out, out of her kitchen. Hell, she even threatened to call the cops. You promised you never do it again. Well, we don't have to worry about that anymore. The woman's dead, remember? Sound like there was no love lost between Mary and Valerie. But is that enough motive to want the woman dead? I hardly recognize the person you become. Mary's husband walks off without another word. You watch as Mary's expression turns somber. She lowers her head and fights back tears. This may be my last shot to get some info out of her. He slap on a friendly smile and walk up to Mary to spark conversation. Mary, hi, there you are. I've been meaning to give you a proper hello. I wouldn't even been doing all this in real life. This is. Oh, I would, I would just, just mind my business. Like that ain't my, that ain't my problem. Like I can, I can say all, all the, what you, what you want to about me. Y'all don't want me to see and tell your secrets. You, you don't. Okay, uh, where you? Don't be judged. Don't judge over here unless you're ready to be judged. I have to ask. Where you get that gorgeous outfit? Is your husband feeling okay? I said that gorgeous outfit. You mean that gorgeous bracelet. God dang. The compliment works like a charm. Mary goes from summer to outright smug, jangling the bracelet on her wrist. Oh, you notice? Know Isn't it so special? Absolutely stunning. Not thinking about I, look. I'm over here thinking. I'm over here thinking about somebody who has a watch, who had this this gold watch on. Mm-hmm. Had this gold watch on. Trash. Exactly. He was trying to look like he was trying to look like he was black, but yeah. Okay. Um. I just felt like what? My husband surprised me with it this morning. An early anniversary gift. You're one lucky woman. Sticky fingers. Well, do enjoy the rest of the potluck. Make sure to grab some of my green bean casserole before it's gone. I'll just make my own green bean casserole at this point. <laughs> I can't have kleptomania on me. <laughs> 
Girl, you like, you don't understand. She walked out that house stealing somebody else's bracelet and she was just like, I, I just, I just, I'm, I'm imagining her being like one of those Sims characters, like a Sims character and they have this expression on their face. And ain't doing this. Like, <laughs> like what? This is, this is what it makes sense. Mary excuses herself and you know better than to press your luck, mulling over in what you learned. Nice talking to you. You find Tyler at a fundraiser pie decorating contest. A pie decorating contest? Bitch, let me... Bitch, let me... Let me what kind of... Ooh, I want to do... Being held at the Upstreet Park, Sadie's still clinging to his arm. Tyler, tell me that that joke about the leaky holes again. You are so funny. She sure isn't acting like Tyler isn't some kind of murderer. I bet she's just pushing the rumor to get him all to herself. Probably so. Cause you know, you know, she feel like she feel like Tyler, like she got Tyler all snatched up to herself or something. It's like Tyler is single. He, he 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 can mingle whenever he wants to. That's his choice. That's his prerogative. Tyler lays eyes on you. A look of relief crossing his face as he lifts his free hand and calls your name. Alex, the contest is just about to start. Come join our decorated team. Sadie glares daggers your way as you approach triggering an automatic smile on your face. Thanks, Tyler, but I'd rather be a team with just you. I'd be delighted. At this point, look, they already sit here. Bruh, bruh, like, I can't. That's too much for me. You know how people like to gossip and stuff? I, I just feel like that's, that's too much. That's too much for me. Don't get me wrong, we all gossip one way or the other, for sure, but I just feel like I'm a type of person who's like, give, I try to give people benefit of doubt, and if they show, if they really not who they say they are. That's on them. Um, thanks, Tyler. <laughs> Sadie's has mon monopolized your time since we got here. It's my turn, don't you think? <laughs> oh, bummer. Tyler and I already signed up together, but I'm sure you can find another downstreeter to team up with. I don't see a reason we can't make this twosome or threesome. Not with her. Not with her. Tyler flashes you a pleading smile. At least he's desperate not to be alone with Sadie as you are. Okay. Agreed. I love teamwork. You pay your donation to the contest coordinator and join the table, Sadie in between you and Tyler. I don't know if you heard, but Tyler and I are known for being quite the duo. Tell him, Tyler. Yeah. Tell me, Tyler. Sadie and I won this contest last year. The neighborhood even started calling us by that ship name. I think they called it, what was it? Sad Tyler. You fight a snort as the contest coordinator dings the starting bell and you grab a container of rainbow sprinkles. Oh, rainbow sprinkles. Oh, honey, let me. Sadie reaches for the container only to bat it from your hand, sending sprinkles flying onto your face and clothes. You bitch. Oops, uh, Butterfingers. You must have been joking about winning last year. Look at what a mess you made of our pie. Oh, I'm sure I can fix, up, fix things right up. You give Sadie a smile that hurts your face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I think about my own. <laughs> well, I think about. I think about like one of my uncles, who who who'll just be like, <laughs> like he he be smiling, he be smiling, and he just go right back to the poker face. He like. You give Sadie a smile that hurts your face, <laughs> face and refocus on your pie, only to feel whipped cream hit your chest and plop into your lap. You glance over the smoking gun, not even trying to hide it. Wow. Oh gosh, it's this manicure. It's making me so clumsy. She really hate man. She real hateful out here. She want to mess up the outfit, and she want girl, girl. You need to be worried about them tracks, cause why, 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 I'm, why am I able to see your tracks? That's what I'm saying. Like why I'm able to see, see, see all that. You gonna wanna get you some hair that blend in. I'm gonna just let that. I'm gonna let that slide for right now. I shouldn't let it slide, cause I'm just like. Alex, we should clean you up before a, sets, a stain sets in. You flash a smug grin as Tyler comes to your rescue, wetting a Tyler and gently wiping the whipped cream off your lap. How's that? Perfect. As his eyes catches yours, catch yours. You put a hand over the towel and direct them to your inner thigh. Feeling yourself start to harden. I have more on my on my chest. My chest. <laughs> you direct his hand to a dollop of whipped cream on the fabric over your pec muscle. Do you see it? I do. Your stomach swoops as he sensually brushes his thumb over the peak. Elicit, eliciting a throbbing between your thighs. <sighs> There's too much pie under my nails. I'm bowing out. Sadie leaves in a huff, and you and Tyler grin at each other as the judge pipes up. All right, pie decorators, only one minute left. I don't know if you picked up on this, but I'm pretty competitive. Then let's try to finish at least one of these pies together. You grab the whipped cream, but Tyler comes up behind you. He reaches around your waist with both arms and put his hands over yours. I want to make sure the whipped cream actually gets on the pie this time. You let Tyler take the lead as his breath hits your neck. His strong hand shooting a thick stream of cream into your empty pie crust. Now we just need a topper. Fresh strawberries, a spritz of lime, some luscious chocolate. How about the luscious chocolate and the strawberries? If I'm gonna do that chocolate. You bite into a chocolate, moaning at the flavor. Holding your wrist, Tyler plucks the rest of the chocolate out of your hands with his mouth. Luscious indeed. Your breath catches as his eyes fall to your lips, but the contest ending, ending bell dings. You and Tyler pull apart as the winner is crowned. Congratulations, Kristen Miller, on your blueberry masterpiece. Oh, this little thing. I'm so flattered. What do you say we make a pit stop at my place? We can grab some towels to clean up. You shiver as your Tyler, you shiver as Tyler's whisper hits your ear. Your pie forgotten, you're sticky with sugar and realize he hasn't stayed completely clean either. I thought you'd never ask. You halfway up the street when the sprinkler on the line you're passing powers on. Tyler turns to you with a mischievous smile. 
Suddenly, I have much more entertaining idea for how we can get clean. He checks for bystanders, but the rest of the neighborhood is at the potluck. Then he steps toward the sprinkler and smirks. <laughs> what do you say, Alex? Wanna get wet? I mean, at this point, I don't even care. I don't even care if my hair reverts back at this point. Yes, let's get wet. <laughs> you look around to make absolutely sure that the coast is clear. Then step onto the lawn with an excited, excited flutter in your chest. I can hardly believe I'm doing this. What? Transpassing on the neighbors' lawn to play in their sprinkler? We all got to live a little. Close, but I mean this. You bypass the sprinkler completely, going straight for the garden ho hose cord on the lawn. Uh-oh. You wouldn't. Oh, I would. And I am. <laughs> you ain't a nozzle at Tyler. He sputters as his shirt gets instantly soaked, clinging to his chiseled chest and abs. Proud of yourself? He you flashed a smug grin, all while enjoying the view of his muscles rippling beneath the skin-tight fabric of his shirt. Delighted. <laughs> that guy, <laughs> too, can play at this game. Tyler grabs you around the middle and you squirm in his, in his strong arms, squealing as cold water douses you both. Tyler! I want to... Press my turn, turn around in his arms. You flink around Tyler's neck, bringing your mouth inches from his. The sexual tension reaches a boiling point as his gaze drops to your lips. Who knew you could be so mischievous? Do you like it? His grip around your middle loosens and his fingers travel south, making you stir in your pants. You shut your eyes, soaking in Tyler's exploration of your body, a throbbing knee growing stronger between your legs. <sighs> Suddenly, Tyler grabs hold of the hose and pulls it out of your hand. Hey, no fair. I'm just trying to help. You have some whipped cream right here, right there. He sprays your chest. You gasp at the cold as your soaked shirt clings to your pecs, your pecs, and your nipples become erect. Now who's the mischievous one? You notice his lustful gaze riveted to your chest and realize you can use this to your advantage to steal the holes back. He won't see this coming. I'll distract him by touching my nipples asking for more water <laughs> let me let me I got <laughs> I gotta pull that up a little bit cuz I like touch touch my nipples <laughs> you miss some whipped cream right Pretending to be cleaning off a smear of cream still lingering on the fabric of your chest. You rub your thumb over your steep peaks. Oh! Your breath catches as they pebble further on your sensual touch. And Tyus's tongue darts out to wet his lips. So naughty. And in broad daylight. You're the one looking, mister. With his gaze locked on your chest, he snatched the holes and dows him. He tries to shield himself with his hands, laughing. Shameless. That's what happens when you let yourself get so distracted. Well now, I just have to do this. Tyler slowly and deliberately slips off his soaked shirt Flexing and his wet muscles glisten. You swallow reflexively. Try not to let yourself get 
distracted. Nice try, but I'm not fa falling for that one. You move forward with the hose, squeezing the trigger, only to slip and fall in the wet grass. Ugh! Alex! Alarmed, Tyler comes to your rescue and offers a hand. You look up to his concerned face, a plan forming in your head. Thanks for the hand. You reach up, you smooth palm, brushes against his rough one. Your stomach swoops as he curls his fingers around your, yours and tugs. Up we go. It's all too easy to let yourself let yourself stubble forward, face planting against his cheek. You keep your cheek against his warm skin as you look up. Sorry. That makes one of us. Tyler takes your hands and presses them flush to his pecs before dragging them down over his rock hard abs. Tyler! The tease and energy has shifted into a sexual tension so high it's about to snap. You look into his eyes and feel his hot breath against your mouth. If all neighborhood potlucks end this way, I say we make them a weekly tradition. And we haven't even forgotten the fireworks yet. He leans closer and your lips tingle with anticipation. But suddenly, teenage voices cut in and send your fun to a screeching halt. Damn, how horny you have to be to do it right in the middle of a family potluck. You know Mr. Lee has outdoor cameras, right? Fuck them kids! Liza! What the hell is wrong with you? You too, bitch! <laughs> Tyler quickly steps in front of you, blocking your wet body with his own. Don't worry, I'll take care of them. Careful, kiss. We got it pretty wet over here. Uh, I'm out of here. <laughs> no! Yeah, y'all better run. Y'all should have been minding your damn business. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm done. The teen's like bicycle off. The teen's bicycle off. And as Tyler takes your hand and leads you to the sidewalk, you find yourself less mortified than you expected. Wet and wild. Just when I think I know what you're going to do next, you surprise me. He rubs your wet arms, expression turning a touch concerned. You sit out in the sun while I run home and grab some fresh towels so we can dry off. I'll be back in a flash. As Tyler heads off, you make your way back to the outskirts of the potluck while you overhear some HOA members chatting. I had some interesting pillow talk with the medical examiner last night. Allison, Alicia, you won't believe this, but Valerie didn't die of a heart attack. No? Then what killed her? She was poisoned. Poison? But that doesn't make sense. Tadis' wife died of a heart attack. Is he not behind Valerie's death, then? Maybe Tyler poisoned his wife, too. But he wants everyone to think it was just a heart attack. This neighborhood cuts him slack because he's so handy. But there's always been something so secretive about him. Like, we all got our secrets. But I don't think he killed his wife. I don't, I don't think he do that. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's people out here who might do some mess out here like that. But I don't think he do that. I don't think so. 
As the women exchange concerned looks, you notice how genuinely afraid they are. It alarms you and makes you wonder. Is there more truth to the rumors about Tyler than I thought? <laughs>